ಅಂಜಿ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಯಾರ ಯಾರು ಇದು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ವಡಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಆರ್ ದೇವಿ ಚಾಮುಂಡಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಲಿ ಟ್ರೈಮ್ ಬರೆಟ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಚಾಮುಂಡಿ ಫಾರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ Merciful Goddess, Shri Gauri, save us. Limpid-eyed consort of Lord Shankara, bestow happiness on us, O giver of boons. Lord, I am really helpless. Ram 
and I can wound, but take it back, I cannot. I have the boon, Lord Shiva's boon. Not man nor beast can do harm to me. I am myself the Lord of the universe. That's true. Death will be caused by neither man nor beast. before the next full moon. If you don't agree, I shall take her by force. Dear daughter, take heart. Oh, Chamundi, save us, mother. We are hopeless, lost, in despair. Save us, beloved mother, save us. The day of the full moon was closing upon them. One evening, like a gentle breeze, wafted in two brothers, they moved towards Mysuru. And presently came upon the Kodi Bhairava temple. Sarvani Rupani Vichitya Dhiraha 
Salutations to the goddess. Here, the holy Arpi. You are new to this place? Revered priest, you guess correctly. I'm Yaduraya. This is my younger brother, Krishna Raya. Namaste. Namaste. Receive the holy prasadam. We are of the Yadu dynasty. We set off from Dwarka. We have traveled all over the country. Could we camp here for a few days? By all means, the presence of Lord Kodi Bhairava and the serene ambience will bring you peace. Good priest, tell us what is special about this region. We are eager to explore. What can I say? All of Hadinaru is in bloom. Misfortune has fallen upon the royal family. And so, the ascetic Jangama Bandari Basapavadiya told the brothers of the bully Maranayaka and his demands. Brothers Yaduraya and Krishnaraya thought over it. They decided to offer their services to the royal family. Namaste, royal mother. We are of the Yadu dynasty. We have come here to free you from your distress. Send a message to Maranayaka that you agree to give your daughter in marriage. May the coming full moon become his day of death. The grateful royal mother sent the planned message to Maranayaka. The full moon arrived. Maranayaka with his entourage moved from Karugahalli to Hadinado. The brothers Yaduraya and Krishnaraya joined the wedding party in disguise. <laughs> With Maranayaka immersed in the merriment, Yaduraya and Krishnaraya suddenly fell upon him. The bullying chieftain fell, cried. my life you have caused misery to helpless women you deserve to die ah! krishna raya lay siege to karugahalli take it under your control i shall secure the safety of the royal family as you command brother royal mother your misery is at end you and your province are secure. We have no means to thank you. Mother, we did our duty. Why talk of gratitude? We seek your grace of heart. Marry my daughter, Deva Jamani, and protect our kingdom. As you wish, mother. Let the wedding take place right away. Hey, came to pass an epoch in Karnataka. A great regime was born. Yadraya ascended the throne on the 11th of April, 1399. He took on the title Vadiya. The princess of Yadu Vamsha, the Yadu dynasty, became the founders of the Mysuru Vadiya dynasty. Let me tell the rest of the story. And who might you be, my lady? I'm Kaveri. Daughter of King Kavera. They call me Loka Pavani, the one who cleanses the world. Thanks to the measureless kindness of Sage Agastya, I flow as a river. Sri Rangapatana is the little island I protect, flowing as I do on either side of it. In the year 1610, Raja Vadeyar the first invaded my little island. The island's ruler, Sri Rangaraya, a vassal of Vijayanagara, was very weak. He surrendered my island to Raja Vadeyar and fled to Talakadu. Victorious Raja Vadeyar now stood before the great golden throne of Vijayanagara. Oh, his eyes weren't enough for all of its dazzling splendor. 
his ears, too inadequate for its far-reaching fame. The world never tired of singing its praises. Uttaratta kachita min milgu anta aramaniya simhasana Darayalla illa hole hole yu anta adakilla sarisamana Adakilla sarisamana There is no equal on earth to this throne of the palace Glittering, shining, splendidly studded with pearl and precious stone Karimarada patti bedagu Uttaratta siriya mirugu On the 23rd of March, 1610, Rajavadya shifted his capital from Mysuru to Mai Srirangapattana. My trusted minister, it is our desire to build a kingdom as glorious as Vijayanagara. We must celebrate Mahanavami, the traditional nine-day festival on a scale to match the grandeur of Vijayanagara. Let the preparations begin. Your Highness, yes, Minister. When the previous ruler, Sri Rangaraya, conducted the nine-day festival, his queen, Alamelama, would send her big pearl nose stud and other precious ornaments to adorn the deity Ranganayaki. But Alamelama has now fled with her husband and taken away her ornaments with her. Send word that she returned them. By this order of his, the warriors of Mysuru became victims of a curse. The curse of a virtuous woman. The previous ruler, Sri Rangaraya, was already dead by then. When the warrior's orders reached Alamelamma, she uttered a terrible curse on the royal family, the like of which had never been heard before. Talakadu, curse on Malangi, curse on the Mysuru rulers, the curse of Alamelamma. I have lost count of the many that have plunged into me, but Alamelamma I can never forget, nor could the Mysuru warriors. The warriors brought to Mysuru a great confluence of erudition, valor, literature, music, and the fine arts. Their enduring ideal was the old Vijayanagara Empire. The lights that danced and glowed on the banks of the river Tungabhadra did shine on the banks of the Kaveri too. Kanthirava Narasaraja Wadiyar was known for his physical prowess. The world knew him as Ranadhira, for he was without equal in the art of wrestling. Lives a 
जट्टी अ ग्रेट जॉयंट ऑफ अ रेस्लर नेवर हैज ही नोन डिफीट हिस अंडरवेयर हैंग्स एट हिस टाउन्स गेट इफ देर बी अ चैलेंजर हु डेयर्स ही मे फ्लिंग द अंडरवेयर असाइड and wrestle with him Trier's message singed the sinews of Ranadhira, made them taut. He arrived in disguise at the town gate of Tiruchinappalli and pulled down the offending garment. The challenge taken, the match ensued. <laughs> Eventually, Ranadhira drew his sword, Vijaya Narasimha. Its sting deadlier than that of a wasp, and struck. Wonder of wonders, the stricken Jatti stood rooted to the spot. The spectators gaped, smiling. Ranadhira nudged gently the Jatti's head, separating clean from the body. it fell to the ground the crowd marveled at the sleight of hand swordsmanship ranadhira kandirava narasaraja wadiya defeated ranadulla khan of bijapur the chieftain of madurai and kempe gowda of magan he extended the king he launched his own mint and brought into currency succeeding kanthirava narasaraja to power came dodda devaraja wadiyar he built the thousand steps up the chamundi hill along the path he installed the exquisite statue of nandi the bull chitta devaraja wadiyar who came later heralded the arrival of the golden age of mysore Chikkadevaraja was a hero. He overcame the chieftain of Madurai and the king of Tiruchinappalli. He defeated the Marathas. He enjoyed the friendship of Aurangzeb, the Mughal emperor of Delhi, who bestowed upon him the title Raja Jagadeva, Maharaja Chikkadevaraja Muhammad Shah. His significant achievement was administrative reform. He set up the Athara Kacheri. the 18 departments of administration he introduced the postal system and regulated markets he constructed the chikkadevaraya and devaraya canals and also established mints he was the patron of singararya who authored the first kannada play mitravinda govinda he was also the patron of writers like tirumalarya chikkopadhyaya Timarasa, Mallika Arjuna, Shingarama, and Sanchi Honnamma. In his work, Ap Pratima Veera Charite, the annals of the incomparable hero Tirumalaya describes Chikka Deva Raja in these terms. Shri Manta, ye dushaila pallava, padam bhoja bhinda. श्री 
Chikadeva Raja's palace. The proximity of the court poets evoked her own poetic inspiration. She wrote a poem titled Hadi Badeya Dharma. One day, Chikadeva Raja was eager to listen to her poem. Hunnamma, I hear that between your duties, you write poetry. May we not enjoy the grace of your lyric? Oh, sire. My lyric is but immature. Your court is endowed with stalwart poets of unmatched caliber. I am but a flickering candle before their poetic brilliance. But Tirunalaria himself has praised your poem in my very presence. Come, do present us a selection of your lyric. I am blessed, my lord, to have the praise of a poet like Tirunalaria and the audience of a king such as your majesty. I am truly blessed. Pennu petta vala balaga bele budu bega. Penna petta varu perchu varu. Pennu pettu dari madhe pesare nisi tumige banna ve. Wise like woman, woman it is who bears, weren't all born by one, protected and nurtured by one, why yet be fools to condemn woman? was a poet, a scholar, and an accomplished player of the veena. His own favorite was a veena named Kalavati. He delighted in the very touch of it. When he placed it on his lap, gently, and plucked the strings with skilled fingers, the universe was filled with sound celestial. The melodies from the instrument resonated sweetly across my tiny island. next is not pleasant. Is it for me to tell you, mother, of the ebb and tide of history? When was it that history was not uneven? Do go on, mother. It was the middle of the 18th century. The Mughals were in decline all over India. The Marathas were growing strong. The British were on the rise. Kings everywhere were reduced to mere dummies. Power went into the hands of strong military heads. Mysuru was not an exception to the times. Army chiefs Nanjarajaya and Devarajaya ruled in wanton abandon. Krishna Raja Wadiyar II protested against their atrocities. 
he decided to talk to his subjects directly to learn of their problems and needs. Karachuri Nanjarajaya did not like this idea. under house arrest but Nanjarajaya himself became a victim of the cruel hand of fate he was instrumental unwittingly in letting into the Mysuru province a young man called Haidar it was at that moment that history took a turn in 1766 Haidar Ali took hold of the Mysuru administration and established absolute control. He ruled in the name of the Wadi. He defeated the British and expanded the Mysore Kingdom over 80,000 square miles. On Haider's death, his son Tipu took over the administration in 1782. Proclaiming himself the Sultan of Mysore, he ruled for 17 years. He fought the British, and in the Fourth Anglo-Mysuru War, he was killed in battle. The 4th of May, 1799, was the day the glory of my beloved island was snuffed out forever. The capital was shifted, this time from Sri Lankapatna to Mysuru, thence my tiny island and I became past glory. The British installed a minor, little Krishnaraja Wadiya III as the new ruler. Divan Purnaya was to oversee the new administration. The Wadiyas were back in Mysuru. In 1800, on this very site, was built a palace in wood, suitable for the residence of the king. It was a five-storied structure with exquisite carvings of intricate design. Krishnaraja Wadiya III was the epitome of the arts. He was a patron of poetry, music and literature. He himself wrote over 20 celebrated works. In his famous work, Sri Tatvanidhi, are descriptions of 35 ancient ragas. medium school in Mysuru, the Raja school. To him, accrues the credit for starting the world-renowned Mysuru Dasara. Krishnaraja Wadiyar III 
was succeeded by Cham Raja Wadiyar the Tenth, who was the harbinger of modern Mysore. He instituted the representative assembly of Mysore state in 1881, the first democratic institution of its kind in the country. It was during his reign that the Kola gold fields, the railroads of Mysore Bengaluru and Bengaluru Tipturu and the Mysore Zoo were established. Chamraj Wadiyar the 10th was fated to an untimely death. In 1894, it was the year 1897, the wedding of Princess Jayalakshmi Munni. President. President Sahib, it is our wish that a grand palace be built at this very spot where the wooden palace stood. Among all palaces, it must shine like a jewel in the crown. As your Highness wishes, I will ask Henry Irwin to prepare a plan for the palace. Henry Irwin? Who is this Henry Irwin? A great architect from England. He built the Vice Regal Lodge at Shimla. Then send for him at once. The master architect came to Mysore. He stood here to take in the 72 acres of the site. The vision of a palace began to take shape in his mind. It was to be a grand structure, 245 feet long and 156 feet wide. The actual palace rose from the ground slowly, surely. The construction of the palace, which began in 1897, saw completion in 1912. Today, people witness the history of Mysore through this glorious palace. An elegant memory of modern Mysore is that of Krishna Raja Wadiyar IV. He took Mysore to its destiny of a model state. The founding of the Shimsha hydroelectric project at Shivanasamudra and the iron and steel works at Bhadravati, the founding of Mysore University, Mysore Bank, Kannada Parishad, the launch of the radio channel, Mysore Akashavani, the Mysore Arisi Kere Railroad and the adult education program, the establishment of libraries all over the princely state, the Miller Commission for the upliftment of backward classes, the legislative council for framing of laws, his roster of achievements grows long. Distinguished administrators like the Divans, Sir Moksha Gundam Vishweshwaraya and Sir Mirza Ismail served the street during his regime. Attention! His Royal Highness Saladhan! Your Highness, Sri Vishweshwaraya awaits your kind audience. Vishweshwaraya, please come. We are appraised of your scheme. Your Highness, if a dam were built across the Kaveri, Thousands of acres of barren land would become most fertile. The lives of the poor would be flooded with wealth. Hmm. We do appreciate your genius. The scheme of such noble ambition will indeed have our ready support. Please proceed. I am most grateful to you. It was during the reign of Krishna Raja Wadiyar IV that the dam was built. 
Behind the dam was built a splendid garden, Vrindavan. Even the hydroelectric power generation project at Shivana Samudra, the first in Asia, was completed during his tenure. Thus, the distinction of bringing electric power to the cities of Mysuru and Bengaluru goes to Krishna Rajavadiyar IV. Mysuru was delighted. Sovereign Krishna Raja, light of every home. The name Krishna Raja became immortal in the history of Mysuru. Mahatma Gandhi called him Raja Rishi, a sage among kings. The University of Banaras bestowed on him a doctorate of law. Eminent Kannada poet B.M. Shrikanthaya wrote lyrics in his praise. Mysore, the land of gold. Mysore, sanctum of the sandal. Mysore, gloried by the Veena. This Mysore of Krishna Raja the Fourth. became the king of Mysore. He was to be its last, ruling from 1940 till 1950, when India became a republic. During his tenure, the Sharavati hydroelectric project and the Badra project were envisaged. A philosopher, connoisseur, musicologist and statesman, he lived up to the Vadir glory. As a composer, his name is reckoned among stalwarts with bhakti or devotion being the main theme of his compositions in Sanskrit. Famous musicians sing them at concerts even today. Shri Son of Shiva, brother of the six-faced Lord, to him who grants wishes and clears obstacles. his last on September 23rd, 1974. The royal dynasty is now past, but it has left behind this breathtaking palace and the undying legacy of fine taste it cultivated among the people. The royal tradition manifests itself every year in the great Dasara festivities. In today's Dasara, now observed as a people's festival, we carry Goddess Bhuvaneshwari, the deity of the land, in a grand procession. All of Mysuru rejoices in this festival of enlightenment. We cleanse ourselves in the holy Kaveri and fill our eyes with Mother Chamundi. We stand mute at the resplendent beauty of this lit palace. Mysuru glows iridescently in its many hues.
ಮೈಸೂರು ದಸರಾ ಆರ್ ದಸರಾ ಇಟ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಅಲೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇಯರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲಿವ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವರ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಮೈಸೂರು ನಾವು ಹಿಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವರ್